Hey YouTube, this is Brian here. I'm going to be doing part four to my top 100 favorite musicians of all time list. Uh, check out the first three if you missed them. Uh, anyways, let's get to number 37 on the list, which is Don McLean. I think he was a true poet in his time and that he wrote great lyrics and defied expectations of what style of music was being made in that decade, you know? When I think of 70s music, I think of music like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple. I don't think of a Dylan-esque singer-songwriter type. And the fact that um, he's classified as a one-hit wonder, I think, is a little bit of a disservice to him. Because he has a lot of other good songs besides, um, besides uh, American Pie, also classified as... Uh, as um, the day the music died. Uh, rest in peace, Buddy Holly, obviously. Um, I think that, uh, I think he has a lot of other good songs to offer besides that, such as Castles in the Air and Everybody Loves Me Baby, you know? Those are two great songs by Don McLean. I think he also has one called Empty Chairs. Um, yeah. Don McLean is a guy with a deep catalog, and that's because he has the skill of writing music, you know? He, he's not just some guy up there strumming power chords or howling into the microphone incoherently. Um, I think the fact that he had that legitimate talent, uh, it bore the depth uh, for his catalog, you know? Let's get on to number 38. Uh, which is Metallica, one of the big four heavy metal bands, I'm pretty sure, and one of the quintessential rock bands of the 80s, you know. Uh, I think that uh, Metallica, they also, in a way, kind of gave birth to Megadeth, you know, uh, when they kicked Megadeth's lead singer out. Um, I think that Metallica had a lot of uh, complexity and uh, almost an orchestral nature uh, to their music, uh, considering that uh, it was normally a style um, that uh, gave way to a lot of simplicity, you know. I think the fact that they had such well-arranged and uh, intricate music um, kind of gives them a, a, a unique platform to stand on uh, for a, a hard rock and for a heavy metal band, you know. Uh, the fact that they almost have an orchestral nature to them. And didn't they actually perform with a symphony at some point? Um, well, that only uh, kind of validates my claim even more, you know. So let's get uh, on to number 39 on this list. And that's Jimmy Rogers, the farthest back uh, entry on this list. Uh, from the mid 1920s and before Jimmy Rogers. I didn't actually know that they had recorded music that far back um, but I guess uh, You know, there's like Jelly Roll Morton in the 1910s and then that kind of gives way uh, To Jimmy Rogers and the influences that he brought to country music In more in the mid to late 20s and then into the early 30s um, but he passed away pretty young, uh, I think of tuberculosis, um, this is before drugs started killing everybody, and I guess they just died for lack of medical care, uh, it's kind of like today. Okay, let's get on to, uh, number 40 on this list, and that's Linda Ronstadt, one of the best female singing voices in the history of music, I think. Uh, Linda Ronstadt could perform in any style, and she did, you know? She performed a song probably from every style of music over the years, and uh, she did it well, you know? Uh, there's no handicap there from not being at home base, you know? Uh, Linda Ronstadt really, um, I think, had one of the most beautiful voices, regardless, male or female, uh, in the history of music. Uh, if I was ranking this and this was like a list of singers, uh, Linda Ronstadt would be towards the top for sure. And that's uh, what I think of her. 
Uh, number 41 on my list is one of the big four, I think, in terms of grunge bands. I know we've mentioned that term uh, with heavy metal. Um, but this band, uh, Pearl Jam, I think deserves to, uh, deserves to join like Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, you know. Um, and, and they deserve to be uh, treated as an equal to those bands because... Uh, uh, they did a lot of uh, awesome work in the genre, you know. Um, my favorite song by Pearl Jam has got to be uh, Black, I think. It's pretty heavy, and it's a little bit depressing. Um, but, you know, most grunge music is a little bit of a downer. Um, it, it's kind of a sad genre, you know. Um, yeah, that's only exemplified by how so many of the uh, so many of the lead singers of these kind of bands uh, if they didn't take their own lives then it's um, exemplified by uh, you know just the depressing lyrics that they sing and how they OD'd you know um, but I, I think that one thing that's unique about Pearl Jam is how Eddie Vader is one of the few uh, lead singers from that genre and from rock in general. It seems like uh, who didn't uh, who didn't kind of flame out young, and uh, he's still around. You know, um, that's not meant as any shot at Chris Cornell or or, or Kurt uh, Cobain or any of those guys. You know, um, it's just you know it's it's just kind of considering he was in such a heavy and uh, taxing genre in a sense because he uh, uh, because he pulled through that I think that uh, it's just extra impressive you know uh, uh, especially you know a genre that's uh, kind of a, a rampant with so much drugs and alcohol and depressing lyrics it just seemed like a happy grunge singer it seems like an oxymoron and uh, uh, resultingly I think that Eddie Vader is probably the only guy we have left now we don't have Kurt Cobain we don't have Wayne Staley uh, I guess we have Jerry Cantrell um, if you count him as a lead vocalist um, yeah so uh, yeah way to go on Eddie Vader uh, you know, stick around. We, we we need you with the way music is going today. <sighs> okay, let's get to number 42. Uh, we're going to go with Johnny Cash for number 42. Uh, a guy who's in music for practically his whole, uh, his whole life, from like his 20s, uh, you know, to the time he died, pretty much, uh, when he did that song, Hurt. And that was a great song. That was one of his best songs, you know. So he never lost it, and he had it. He had it the whole time, you know. Uh, I think that Johnny Cash's longevity and uh, you know his community services, such as going to do concerts at prisons and stuff, he didn't have to do that, you know. Um, I think that uh, it, it shows empathy. It shows the kind of man he was. And it shows the kind of person he was, you know, and um, that's without even mentioning his music, you know, um, but I don't really even think it needs mentioning, you know, Johnny Cash was one of the greatest country singers of all time. I don't think anyone would, would debate that, you know, number 43, uh, we're going to go in a completely different direction. Uh, we're going to go uh, forward a couple years. Uh, to talk about Tupac Shakur um, and this is uh, stylistically a big change from you know like Johnny Cash and Metallica and Jimmy Rogers but uh, even though rap isn't generally uh, my style uh, that I dabble in uh, too much I think that Tupac Shakur was uh, really a poet in his time you know he was probably the best lyricist of the 90s arguably um, just listen to the song Ambitions as a Rider, you know, uh, it sounds weird coming from me, uh, but once you hear it, I think you'll see what I mean in terms of this man being, uh, a really, really 
great lyricist you know he might have sang in an angry or kind of threatening manner but uh you know it, it's just it's just an act you know it's just uh you know uh, it's just an act it doesn't really take away the uh the uh true uh poeticness um of the lyrics you know let's get to number 44 uh buddy holly earlier you know when we were talking about don mclean we mentioned the day that the music died and rest in peace to buddy holly um but i think that uh it you know it's worth giving buddy holly his own spot on here even though he passed when he was only 22 or 23 years old uh, the day that the music died is actually named after a plane crash uh, which included Buddy Holly and it included uh, other musicians named uh, the Big Bopper and uh, Richie Valens um, and uh, that was a really tragic accident that was one of the saddest events I think in music uh, up to that point you know since they'd started recording music that was probably one of the saddest tragedies uh, to befall uh, the musical community uh, but yeah Buddy Holly was a, a great and uh, did you know that uh, he influenced the Beatles towards the, their name because his band was called the Crickets um, I think I may have already mentioned that but uh, uh, okay this is such a long series <laughs> okay let's get to Number 45, Elvis Presley. Uh, Elvis um, Elvis is a lot like Michael Jackson in a sense that he, he kind of underwent a lot of uh, wear and tragedy and stress and strain in his life and the kind of tabloid nature with which everyone followed him so closely. Um, you know, Elvis may not have had as many scandals uh, as Michael Jackson did, but, uh, uh, you know, you could see by the end of his life that he was just worn out. You know, he was overweight and he looked, um, he, he just looked tired out, you know, just like he didn't have much left to give. He just looked, I guess the word would be drained, you know, and uh, that's a, a shame because... Uh, watch a video of him doing blue suede shoes when he was a young man and it, it's from like the 1950s or early 60s um, he has so much spark so much life to him and uh, it's just kind of a shame to see uh, a man who had uh, so much uh, passion and energy towards music uh, as kind of like a human chicken wing or something you know, he, he almost looks like, uh, if you're a wrestling fan, Jerry the King Lawler, you know. Um, he's just got like this big beer gut. And, well, I guess we've all seen Elvis. Uh, uh, but, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess um, what I'm trying to say is that we need to treat our musicians better. And, in a sense, stop, uh, like, pseudo stalking people uh through the magazines and newspapers and stuff and uh um maybe if we did that then um we wouldn't have these issues with uh musicians falling apart by middle age like or, or committing suicide you know just from the feeling that they can't get away you know um and i'm not blaming any fans for um those people's deaths but at the same time I guess maybe if we gave the musicians a little bit more space um, we wouldn't have people you know like Michael Jackson who had had a ton of plastic surgery and uh, ended up kind of like a, a human tabloid feature towards the end of his life or um, or like uh, Elvis, who was abusing prescription drugs and had gotten noticeably overweight, probably in part because of his liver. Um, you know, it, I guess if we gave these artists a little bit more space and room to live their personal lives, maybe uh, we wouldn't have as many tragedies uh, centered around uh, artists taking their own lives, you know, uh, through whatever manner. 
Okay, let's get to probably the last artist we're going to talk about today, and that's Fats Waller, uh, one of the innovators of stride piano, and um, I think that, uh, you know, his, uh, his energetic and happy kind of singing, uh, I think it branded his piano playing and separated him from other equally talented uh, artists such as Errol Garner or Art Tatum, you know, uh, none of those guys really sang while they played, uh, but the fact that he was playing that really complex stride style uh, while he sang and, and sometimes while he even interacted with people, I, I remember seeing a video where he was interacting, uh, he was kind of flirting with this girl who was uh, um, sitting on top of the piano or maybe she was sitting next to him on the chair. I don't really remember. Uh, anyways, let's uh, end this now. Uh, thank you for watching.